감사합니다. 아, 오늘 주시는 말씀 우리 함께 보겠습니다. 아, 시편 34편 8절 한절 말씀인데요. 우리 함께 읽도록 하겠습니다. Psalm 34 verse 8. 우리 함께 받들 읽겠습니다. Let's read together. Psalm 34 verse 8. 예. 우리 34장 전체인데 우리 한 절만 읽도록 하겠습니다. 우리 편하신 언어로 읽겠습니다. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who take refuge in him. 아, 이 시간에 우리 어, 강신영 목사님, 자식 목사님 나오셔서 주를 경험하는 자, 주를 선포하는 자. Encounter Jesus, Proclaim Jesus라는 말씀으로 어, 제목으로 말씀 나누실 때에 우리 큰 은혜 시간 되시기 바랍니다. 우리 목사님 나오실 때에 박수로 환영하고 우리 말씀 듣도록 하겠습니다. God is good, and all the time. Amen. Uh, this morning, um, I'm going to share a little bit of my own story. Uh, but before I do, I, I would like to kind of look at this one verse uh, that we've read together. Uh, David wrote this psalm, uh, and it seems like he was in a moment where he really needed God. Uh, he was in a moment of crisis, struggle, um, and what he found was that God delivers him, uh, God saves him, God rescues him. And he says, O oh, taste and see uh, the goodness of God. Uh, blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. You know, we too uh, live in the reality of God's salvation through Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus saved us, amen? Uh, but I, I, I wonder sometimes uh, in my life and uh, the people around me, loved ones, uh, why is it that we don't experience the joy uh, that comes with this truth? Uh, in other words, why, why don't we taste the goodness of God? And as I reflect upon my own life and even now today, um, I think it's because of this. Uh, I think we live in duty and we live for booty and not being drawn by beauty, okay? Uh, again, not duty or not booty, but being drawn by beauty is how God moves in our lives. Um, let me explain this a little bit uh, before I know some of us are thinking some other things, okay? Uh, when I mean duty, uh, I think of this picture is often we are told what to do and we are expected what to do. And, and so the hands, the finger pointing is you need to do this, you need to do that. And it's not just the fingers of other people pointing at us, but it's our own fingers pointing at us. I need to do this. I need to do that. Uh, 제가 지금 설명하는 것은 uh, 우리가 왜 하나님을 자, 이렇게 경험을 못한 이유가 있으면 뭘까 그 질문 안에서 제 삶을 좀 돌아보고 또 uh, 성경을 보고 그럴 때이이이 이, 이, 어, 문장이 어, 제가 생각이 났습니다. 우리는 의미와 어, 이익을 위해 사는 게 아니라 정말 하나님의 아름다움을 그걸 경험하고 그게 저희를 이끌려야 되지 않나 그런 생각이 듭니다. 그래서 이제 이 사진을 보면 약간 의무 우리가 뭘 해야 되는지 내가 이걸 해야 된다 내가 저걸 해야 된다 그러니까 생각되고요. Uh, second picture is booty. Okay, this is the booty I'm talking about. Okay, some of you guys are thinking something else. Uh, it could be that too. Okay, uh, but by booty it's pirate's booty. Uh, that's where the word comes. Pirate's booty, and it means treasure. Uh, uh, we live for the treasures of this world, shiny things. Uh, that can not just be objects, money, wealth, uh, but it can also be approval, uh, fame, glory, uh, human honor, uh, that type of thing. 
어, 이두 번째 사진은 이제 제가 얘기하는 불이인데요. 이제 해적들이 이제 보물을 찾는 것처럼 어, 우리가 어떻게 사는지 보면 어쩔 때는 이제 세상에 어, 보물과 그런 거를 찾으면서 그런 거를 어, 좋아하면서 그렇게 살 때도 있다고 생각됩니다. 하지만 어, last picture, um, you know when I see um, I, I love mountains and the oceans and waters, uh, but I think the reason why I love it is because there's a beauty to it. Uh, there's a magnificence. I, I look at it and I'm just like, wow. And it captures my heart. Uh, I, I think this is the way God moves and works in our lives. Um, 이 마지막 사진을 보시면 이제 산인데요. 아, 어, 되게 제 산과 바다 그런 거 되게 좋아하는데 정말 이런 엄청난 자, 어, 이게 어, scenery를 보면 정말 제 마음이 막 이끌어가요. 근데 하나님께서도 이런 웨이로 저희를 어, 저, 이끌고 저의 삶을 인도하지 않은가 그렇게 생각이 듭니다. Uh, so in other words, uh, we can uh, take off the picture. Uh, I, I believe Christian life is not booty, nor is it duty, uh, but really being drawn by the beauty of the gospel. Okay? And this is my story. Uh, I was born in America, uh, specifically Bridgeport, Connecticut. Uh, my parents immigrated to the U.S. Uh, because I, I found out later uh, that they wanted to study more. And, and perhaps also they wanted to start a family uh, in a new country. And uh, many of you guys know I have a younger sister named Kathy uh, who is married and has a daughter, uh, my niece, uh, that we attend uh, Korean Church of Dallas Life and Fruit together. Uh, but as I tell you my story, uh, I believe uh, my story Uh, began even before I was born. Um, I realized understanding my parents' background and my heritage and my upbringing also is very important to understand my own upbringing. Uh, my father, my dad, uh, was grown up in a military family uh, where my grandfather was a Navy officer. And so you could imagine how stern and strong and strict he may have been, right? On top of that, uh, my father and his family grew up in the church as well. They uh, grew up going to church. And uh, they grew up in a particular denomination in Korea uh, called Koshin. Um, and what many of us know is uh, they believe in Jesus, they love the Lord and all of that. Uh, but some of the particular things is they're very conservative. Uh, and I found out the reason why was because during the Japanese colonial war, uh, when Japan forced Christians to bow down and worship their gods, uh, there were many Christians who did uh, for the sake of their own life and their family. But there were many who didn't and were killed. Now, many of those who later became this Koshin denomination were those who didn't bow down. And even at the cost of their lives. So uh, there is a lot of um, confidence, uh, perhaps if you say it a little bit negatively, pride, uh, perhaps. Uh, but ultimately, they had a very strict and strong devotion to God. That was my dad. My mom, uh, she grew up in a large family. Uh, she had many aunts and uncles and many cousins. And my maternal grandmother uh, was a very strong woman. Uh, she was the oldest of many sisters, and she had one brother who was eventually lost uh, during the Korean War, too, and he, he was uh, not to be found. Uh, but she, along with my grandfather, uh, worked very hard uh, to raise up her own family, but also the family of her sisters. Uh, and my mom told me uh, and expressed that often that left the feeling of a little bit of regret, um, of uh, not regret, sorry, neglect uh, of their own family needs. Uh, as I heard the story, uh, this is obviously much later on, uh, I realized such backgrounds uh, of my parents impacted them, and it impacted the way they raised me and how our home operated. 
uh, both my parents uh, were very hardworking. Uh, they were very sacrificial people. And I've often seen them uh, put away their own personal needs and their own desires uh, for the sake of our family, uh, for the sake of our church, uh, and even for the sake of their neighbors. Uh, they were also very strict and instilled moral values uh, in our family. Uh, when I was born, uh, my strong maternal grandmother uh, took me to Korea uh, when, and I was raised uh, by my grandparents, my relatives. Uh, so from infancy to my toddler years, uh, I was raised by my relatives and grandparents in Korea. So imagine just how much love I must have received, right? Oh, on my dad's side, I was their first grandchild uh, and grandson. On my mom's side, uh, I was the third grandchild uh, but I was the first child of their youngest daughter. Right? Uh, I don't remember too much, uh, but I, have, I remember seeing photos uh, proving just how much attention and love that I'd received during these years. Uh, later, when I turned around three years old, uh, I was sent back to my parents uh, on a plane by myself. Uh, there was a time when kids could go by themselves on planes, and I arrived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, I don't remember too much, uh, but as I think about, you know, a child transitioning uh, at that age, experiencing so much love and attention by so many people, to now going to a foreign land with a foreign language, uh, I actually had to go through ESL and, and learn English. Uh, and, and now I was going to parents and a sister now, uh, who my Kathy was born by then, who I haven't lived uh, with several years. Uh, so though I was born in the States, you know, in some ways I had my own little re-immigrant uh, experience myself. And as I look back at my life, uh, I lived much of my life seeking to be dutiful individual, uh, living by duty. And uh, as I think about why did I do that, uh, I think it's because that is how I experience love. Uh, this is how I fulfill my desire to be appreciated, loved, and liked by people. So, uh, you know, ever since I was a child, I, I remember carrying a particular pers persona or trying to project a certain image uh, with people. You know, uh, one of the things uh, early on was my duty uh, was to be a good son, uh, to be a good boy. Uh, my parents worked very long and uh, long hours. Uh, sometimes uh, we had to have babysitters uh, come take care of us, uh, my sister and me. But later when I became a little bit older, uh, I remember uh, feeling like the responsibility was now on me. I, I had to take care of my sister because I was the oldest and I was the son. My way of contributing to my family uh, was to be a good son. Uh, what that meant for me was to behave properly, uh, to be a help to my parents, to go to school, uh, get good grades, uh, go to church, be a good brother. Uh, this was my duty. Uh, a little bit of my school years, um, believe it or not, uh, I was quite popular in school, right? Uh, and I, I really liked that. Like, I loved being able to bring laughter to people. Uh, so I was very outgoing. Um, and I was even liked by others, even though I was one of the few Asians uh, in my school. Right? Uh, I, again, I liked the attention that I received. And... Uh, this sort of was very similar to even church. Uh, I, I grew up going to a smaller Korean church, and uh, I, I loved being there because I felt like, oh, these were my people. Like, they look like me. Uh, they, they know my family. Um, and I felt like it was home. But either in church or in school, uh, I, I kept a certain image to my church and to my peers. This is how I wanted to appear before them. Uh, 
a little bit more on my school life, uh, you know, many of us going to school, it is our duty. Uh, we, we are instilled in us that we need to be successful, right? We need to learn. So for me, as academics got serious, uh, no longer, you know, when grades were just given for just participating, uh, I, I, did, I really did my best uh, to maintain A's. Now, my understanding of doing my best was I must get an A. Uh, but later on, I realized, you know, doing my best uh, is what I can do. But oftentimes, I didn't know, did I do my best? Because I didn't get an A, right? Um, but anyway, uh, in the younger years, I, I remember friends would ask uh, one another, how many A's did you get? And they we would show each other report cards. And I would feel good when I had the same amount of A's, or if not, a little bit more uh, than they did. I remember one of my proudest moments as a child uh, was when uh, I, we had to all write an essay. And it was for the D.A.R.E. program. I don't know if it still is there today, uh, but it stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. And uh, my essay was selected uh, among my whole grade, and I got to read it in front of my whole student assembly, the faculty, and local authorities. Uh, I, was, I was so proud, and I knew my parents were proud of me. Uh, so that, was, that felt really good. And I also remember um, uh, being happy for getting on the honor roll, and I remember my parents were so proud. Uh, so I, I made it my duty, okay, I need, to, I need to be a successful student. Now, there's academics, there's church. Uh, another special area of my life was friendship. Right? Uh, I loved my friends. Right? I, I, I made it my duty to be a good friend and uh, be loved by my friends. Uh, so I, I loved spending time with them. Uh, I remember we would ride bikes around the neighborhood. Uh, we would create these clubs uh, where we'd have secret handshakes, you know. Uh, we would create forts uh, right by the creek. You know, in fact, I remember following my friend, friends uh, in whatever they did. Uh, sometimes I noticed even how I laugh was very similar to them. Uh, so I, I think there were good things about that, but this also got me in a lot of trouble too. Right? Uh, I ended up fighting uh, with kids. Uh, I tried my first cigarette for the first time uh, with my friends. Uh, I accessed my first pornographic website uh, with my friends. Uh, and really lastly, um, in my church life uh, as a Christian, uh, I was taught that I need to be a good Christian. Uh, and I made it my duty to do that. And I, I was told, since you're older, you have to model that for others. You know, so uh, I think a lot of this was more caught than taught uh, how I need to act at church. Um, I, 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 I thought, okay, I had to be at my best behavior. And while it's sinners who come to the church, uh, what I saw and what I caught was that you need to hide your flaws you only show your uprightness so that you can love and serve others. You, you need to be an example. So while I, I felt comfortable uh, that I could be my real self, my Korean self at church, uh, there were many parts of my life, my thoughts, my emotions, my actions, that I felt I had to keep hidden. And I think what that eventually led to was I was living a double life. Right? What I felt was a double life. Um, you know, much of my life, I felt like I was wearing masks. I was wearing masks. So with my friends, I wore a certain mask. With my parents, I wore another mask. Uh, with my church, uh, I wore another mask. Uh, and at school, I wore another mask. You know, this realization came to me when I saw a, a very powerful skit that spoke to me. Um, and this skit uh, was where a girl was uh, wearing a mask before she met certain people of her life. Uh, so the skit goes, she's meeting with her friends, so before she goes, she'll put on a mask and then she'll have fun. 
play, and then she'll come home, and then she'll take off the mask, and then before she meets her parents, she'll put on another mask, and then you know talks with them and things like that, and then finally at home that she'll take uh, in her room she'll take off her mask. Then one day Jesus comes knocking, knocking on the door, and before she opens the door to Jesus, she's like, okay, what mask do I need to wear? And so she finds one and goes to Jesus, opens the door. And uh, Jesus looks at her, and she act- he actually takes off her mask and puts it away. And so she's kind of flustered, and so she goes back and f- tries to find another mask, and she puts it on and then runs back to Jesus. And, and Jesus takes off that mask and then throws it away. And then this repeats on and on and on. Um, and until she runs out of masks, and her real self is now encountered with Jesus. Uh, these roles that I grew up uh, striving to fulfill and, and keep uh, as my duty, um, it didn't last too long. Uh, there came a point where it started to show holes in my own heart. Um, It was not only impossible to maintain the image that I wanted to project, but I started to see deep-seated issues and exhaustion in my own heart. I I start to ask, you know, who am I? And I I start to feel, does anyone know me? Um, I think a couple of things that happened in my life that uh, really... mm, I think God used to really uncover these things because he really wants to see the real me. He wants me to be the real me. Uh, Our our family moved a lot uh, due to financial reasons and also because my parents were looking for work. And every time uh, uh, we would move, uh, it would mean that I and my sister and even my parents would have to adjust to new surroundings again and again. And it would eventually make it very hard for me uh, to establish friendships, uh, as already many of these students uh, and people had their own family and, uh, sorry, not family, but friendships. So I I felt like I had to do a lot of work to just get in, right? So I felt quite alone. And uh, part of life is as we grow up, we start to have our own opinions and thoughts. Uh, And my own desires and, and even resentment towards my parents that built up over the past, uh, it often sometimes exploded, boom, right, with huge conflicts with them. And what I felt was that my parents wanted me to do things that I didn't want to do. Uh, now, looking back, uh, I know, you know, they were coming out of love uh, and wisdom, and they just wanted the best for me, right? But I, I didn't feel like that at the time. So sometimes I would lie to them uh, and even be very passive aggressive uh, to get what I want or to show my anger towards them. Uh, so uh, things at home was really difficult too. Uh, now, I- even in school, uh, up until high school, I, I kind of cruised through my studies. Uh, but in high school, I started to not do so well. Uh, in my classes. You know, I I spent a lot more time playing computer games and and spending time with my friends. Uh, I ended up procrastinating in my work, waited until the last minute. Um, Rather than learning, uh, I just kind of, I just wanted to get through things, like finish the task so I can do what I want or just get over uh, these things. So again, I I, I felt like I I started to see a splintering in in my own self and living a double life, right? On one hand, uh, I was beginning to be filled with anxiety, uh, anger. Uh, I started to be addicted to games uh, and even pornography. Uh, While on the other hand, I still tried to keep my image, uh, especially at church. Uh, I I tried hard to look good as a Christian, right? Uh, I led praise, right? Uh, was part of a small group. Uh, I attended many retreats. Right? Every retreat I go, and uh, God would touch me. And I, I really think uh, he really did touch me. It's not that those experiences were not real. They were. Right? 
and God was definitely gracious. Uh, but it would take some deep inner touch uh, by God to stop me, uh, to heal me, uh, and to restore me. Uh, one of the ways that I, I often escaped or, or relieved my stress uh, was found in music. Uh, I, I was really into K-pop. Uh, I love like, uh, these groups that perhaps some of you young ones don't know, like H.O.T., Jack's Kiss, Pink, right? Uh, I was obsessed with BOA, right? Uh, I, I found escape in my friendships, uh, computer game. So it, it's not just I enjoyed, but it was a way I escaped the problems that I had, the struggles, to tune it out, right? Uh, sports, uh, working out. Uh, I, I also really got into a deep place of being addicted to pornography. Uh, that was way I, I, I found instant pleasure and gratification. So some of these ways uh, were, I, I think, healthy ways uh, of dealing with my stresses. But some of this, you would agree, it was not healthy. Right? It was unhealthy. But all of these things uh, were not permanent, nor was it long-lasting. Right? It was temporary. Uh, one day, um, I had a neighbor uh, who lived across from our apartment, and he was an electric guitarist. Uh, he, he apparently played for famous bands in Korea. And he had actually several guitars, and he found out that I wanted to learn guitar. And so he uh, made some time to teach me, uh, but also he gave me one of his guitars. I was so thankful. Uh, but looking back, it, it was one of God's ways of opening a channel uh, where he would encounter me. He would really touch my heart in a deep way, in a very personal way. And even till now, I, God always uses worship and praise um, to really um, break me out of rebellion, of my heart and heart, uh, but also uh, really give me joy once again. Uh, so uh, I learned the guitar, and uh, one evening, uh, this was in my high school years, uh, everything just blew up inside of me. Like, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, I had thoughts of, why do I need to live? Like, and my emotions were all over the place, and I didn't even know these were emotions at that time, to be honest. Uh, things and people that I once held on to and was... Uh, really, my pillars uh, were no longer either present, nor did I feel that it was they, they, they were helping me. And it was at this moment that really God made his presence uh, known to me. Uh, uh, it was when I, I was crying, when I was praying, but particularly through a song. Uh, this song is entitled, uh, Through It All, Through It All. And the lyrics uh, goes like this. Uh, it says, God, you are forever in my life. Uh, you see me through the seasons. Uh, cover me, Lord, with your hand and lead me in your righteousness. And it says, I look to you and I wait on you. I'll sing to you, Lord, a hymn of love for your faithfulness to me. I'm carried in everlasting arms. You'll never let me go through it all. Uh, so in one sense, I, I was looking for something that would be permanent and forever in my life. And this song was showing me, ah, it's God. But in another way, this song was God telling me that, hey, Josh, I, I'm with you forever. I've seen you through the seasons. Even sometimes when you don't know what you're feeling and what you're thinking, I know, I know. And, and that really, um, uh, I, I felt, I didn't see God touching me or I didn't see a, a picture, but I, I felt God's presence just comforting me. You know, when I felt so exhausted and filled with thoughts and emotions that uh, I didn't even know how to comprehend, um, you know, I, I think it was God's grace where what I was taught and what I saw from my parents, from my pastors, 
from my teachers, from other Christians. I didn't know what to do, so I, I, I just did what they, they did. And oftentimes, what I saw them do was they go to God. They go to God. So that, that was why I, I grabbed my guitar and I, I started to play this song. And as I did, I felt streams of just tears just coming down my, my face. And I, I didn't expect this, uh, but God would meet me there uh, in, in my brokenness. And again, through this song and through God's grace and comfort, I began to realize, you know, God, God was there uh, through it all. Uh, not as one who is far away, uh, but really intimately walking with me, right? He's watching me, protecting me, guiding me. You know, when I felt lost, when I felt fake uh, and so frustrated, uh, I, I, I felt God's comfort and grace in my life. You know, this, uh, this was the beginning of where I was starting to uh, understand what does it mean to know God and be drawn to God? You know, we, that was a moment where Josh, Josh encountered God's beauty, right? Uh, and it came in the form of him underst- uh, me understanding that he is always present with me. Uh, it came in the form of, wow, he is powerful. When sometimes these people that are most closest to me uh, can't seem to understand me, wow, he knows me. He actually knows me so well. And uh, his beauty uh, was that even when I have sinned, uh, when I have so much shame, when I'm living the double life, when I have guilt, his love embraces me. You know, that was the point when uh, his beauty, his loveliness was drawing my heart. And, you know, this became one of the turning points in my life. Now, I was drawn by God's beauty. And today I, I will say I am not the same. Hallelujah. I am not the same. You know, much of my life I, I lived by duty and after the desire of the beauty, the booties of this world, right, the treasures of this world. Uh, but however, God encountered me, and I was drawn by his beauty. And, uh, you know, honestly, still to this day, am I not sometimes draw, uh, moved by duty? Uh, my role as a husband, as a pastor, like as a son, I, I need to do these things? No, I, I, I need that. Uh, and still, my heart as a human, as, as flesh, I, I am drawn by the booties of this world, right? the temptation. Uh, but what I need and what I uh, think that we all need is we need to be drawn by the beauty of God every day. Right? If not, again, we can easily operate out of duty, dutifulness, or we can be driven by our, our core desire of flesh, of booty. And uh, these, don't, these don't really transform our, our hearts. It, it cannot uh, only the beauty of God transforms and changes us really from the inside uh, to the out. So, um, you know, I, I hope my story shows uh, that uh, for this one soul, uh, it's not duty, uh, nor is it booty, uh, but it's being drawn by the beauty of God himself. You know, David's life, the psalmist uh, in Psalm 34, his life was also transformed. And he says again, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. You know, David saw the beauty and the goodness of God. He tasted it, and he said, God, I need more. I'm going to run into you. So again, uh, dearest brothers and sisters, uh, men and women, uh, young uh, boys and girls. Uh, It's not duty, uh, it's not booty, uh, but it's being drawn by the beauty of the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Let's sing together.